What's going on guys, Vulcan here, and today we're gearing up with eight of the best weapons and armor sets that you need to get. Now, these are available at any time, and I was able to get all of them under level 30. Plus, I typically suck at these type of games, so if I can get them, literally anyone can. So, let's go ahead and get this started. Now the first one we're going to get is a very powerful and mobile great sword that you've probably seen lots of folks using, whether it's in other YouTube videos or TikToks, and it definitely makes the early game pretty easy, and it gives you some really great movement in and out of melee range. Plus, this one is fairly easy to get, you just need to complete a short side quest and kill a boss. Oh, and on a side note, there are a couple extra steps that you can follow after this quest to earn a talisman that reduces your mana cost. So to start, enter the Mistwood Ruins and find Blade on top of a tower. He's this Howling Beast Knight. So once you hear the howling, this kind of kicks off the side quest. Now from here, you want to return to the Church of Ayla and talk to Kale. He'll have a dialogue option about the howling in Mistwood, and he gives you a finger snap emote. Return to the Mistwood Ruins and use the finger snap to summon Blade. Now he's going to mention that Kale must have sent you and that he is looking for a traitorous beast known as Dairy Will, and he's going to offer you a reward if you find him. So from here, you want to head to the southernmost part in West Limgrave, and here you're going to find a large dish in the ground with a plate in the center. You can examine it to enter. Now after a few seconds, Dairy Will will appear and the fight begins. So as an astrologer, I just kept my distance, rolled and basically whittled him down with my magic. Really he does have some intense combos and lots of speed, so you want to be able to keep your distance until he breaks out of his combo and then you can deal damage. So really, dodge while he's flailing around and then once he stops to take a break, deal your damage, rinse repeat until he dies. Now after he's dead, you're going to be automatically teleported out of the instance and Blaith will be there. Now you want to speak to him for your reward and he's going to give you a couple smithing stones. Now talk to him again and he'll tell you to seek out a large smith in the northern region and tell him that Blaith sent you. This again sends us way north to a grace point called Road to the Manor. Speak to the giant blacksmith there and mention Blaith sent you and this unlocks the Carrion Family Crest Talisman which reduces all FP cost to skills. The next weapon we're talking about is a legendary sword that's fantastic for casters, and it has this like Kamehameha wave looking skill, and again, this one is relatively easy to get. You don't even need to kill anything. You just need to head to North Lernia to the manor. Now, you'll know you're getting close when you start seeing magic missiles rain down from the sky, so you want to make sure to dodge those and reach the front gate to unlock a grace point. Now, once you enter the manor, you need to hug the left all the way to this specific entrance. Now, watch out for hands that are buried because they're going to deal some serious damage, possibly kill you, especially if you're too low of a level. So you can see kind of their fingertips sticking out of the ground. So take your time and work around those. That way you don't have to restart. Now, once you get inside that building, run up the stairs and you'll see another grace point. You need to grab this and then get ready for your run. So exit the building and head right. Follow the ramparts until you reach this specific point and then jump down onto the roof of another rampart. Don't worry, you're not gonna take any damage. And then you're gonna jump down again and you'll see a ladder leading down into one of the buildings. You wanna follow this down and the legendary sword is right there in the chest. Now, this one does require 12 dexterity and strength and 24 faith and intelligence. So I can't use it quite yet at level 30, but man, my friend has it and it looks amazing. I am so stoked and cannot wait to get the stats needed. So keeping with the magic theme, we're going to get an incredibly powerful staff very, very early. So if you're an astrologer like me, pay attention because this one is going to help take your build to the next level. So to start on your journey for the meteorite staff, you need to either fast travel to the Astray Highway North in Kalid, or take the transporter trap in Ag Heel Lake. Now either one's gonna work. Granted, the Ag Heel method is a little bit slower since you end up in a crystal tunnel way north. So for this walkthrough, I'm gonna explain the Ag Heel route since that one is the preferred way for lower levels. So start by heading into Ag Heel Lake and then finding the ruins near the center. This is not where the dragon spawns, so you don't have to worry about that. Instead, there's going to be a handful of undead enemies and kind of wolves prowling around. So you want to burn them down, and once that's done, look for a stairway heading underground. 
Now follow this into a big chamber of rats, eliminate all of the rats, that way you can open the door. Um, now as a lower level, I would highly recommend taking them one by one and fighting them in the tunnel so you can kind of group them up. Or if you are feeling froggy, you can just jump in there and nuke them all at once in the center of the room. It's really up to you. Now, once they're all dead, you can open the door and then open the chest. This will be a teleporter trap that sends you across the world into the Celia Crystal Mines in Kaled. Now here, there is a chest that is immediately in front of you. Go ahead, open that, and then slowly exit the shack. So there's a few things to watch out here. There's gonna be a patrolling enemy. Basically just avoid them. They're too high of a level for you to fight right now. You don't wanna die and it's gonna be a mess. So avoid him, but the enemies that are digging, they're fine. You can just run past them. They're not gonna aggro you because they're too preoccupied with their digging. So don't worry about those guys. Exit the shack and then head right and then continue onward. You'll find a ladder heading down and a side of grace and the exit point leading you into Kaled. So from here, you're going to be northeast of where you actually need to be. So from the mines, you want to head west until you reach a road. And there's another side of grace there, which I would highly recommend grabbing. And then head south until you find the Astray Highway North site. Now from here, head back northeast until you reach some cliffs with some ruined buildings around and jump down. Do not jump into the building. There are poison plants in there that'll kill you at lower levels. If you're on torrent, you'll kind of get stuck between them and it's just, it's a mess. So just jump down in front of the building and then head around to the back. Here you can walk along a thin ledge and then loot the staff without fighting any of those plants. So while we're poking around Kaled, there is another meteor related weapon called the Meteor Ore Blade, which has this really kind of cool gravity skill. It's a katana that's perfect for a samurai or those who want kind of fast stance builds. It has a little bit of magic in it as well. So this one is just one of those kind of well-rounded weapons that I really, really enjoy. Okay, so again, from the Astray Highway North, Grace Point, you want to head southwest towards the waterfront. Now, you want to target this little kind of bump area here. Now, the area we're looking for has a bunch of these like centipede mages. It's very hard to miss. So you want to run through the ruins and look for a stairway leading underground. Now, you don't need to clear the ruins. You just need to run past those enemies and they will not follow you down the tunnel. So this area is where things can get a little bit tricky. Now, the next chamber is just packed full of centipede enemies and they all need to be killed. So as an astrologer, I pulled them one at a time and kind of burned them down. And then once a few around the doorway were gone, I summoned my wolf pack to help me clean up the rest. Now you can obviously use any ashes summons that you want or none at all. This just kind of helps speed up the process. But once everything is dead, open the door at the very end and you can loot your brand new super sword. Now, to complement our one-hander builds out there, we need a shield that isn't just a blocking tool, and that's where the jellyfish shield comes into play. So this jelly-inspired offhand gives you the ability to block and parry, but also has a skill called Contagious Fury that increases your attack power. So overall, this one works well for those sword and board players that still like to dish out some decent damage. Now, to get started, you need to head to Lernia Lakeshore or head to King's Realm Ruins. Either one will get you there. You just need to head to this spot on the map, which is just south of the soldier camp along the ridgeline. You'll know you found the right spot when you see all of these red jellyfish. If you're heading from King's Realm, also keep an eye out for a moving caravan because, again, there's a lot of enemies there. And you can also follow it to where you need to go because it actually heads back up to that soldier camp that I mentioned earlier. But anyway, back to the jellyfish. So the fight itself is super easy. They can be really pretty much taken care of without any effort at all. And then once they're all dead, just pick up the shield in the middle and that is it. So if you're like me and you need as much help as possible in these games, I would highly suggest getting this healing talisman as soon as you possibly can. Now it doesn't give massive amounts of health regeneration, but it does give slow regeneration. And it's nice to know that you can take a breather and let your health refill without having to use a flask. So to get this one, you need to head south into the Weeping Peninsula. Now from here, you want to keep right and head to the southernmost tip of the area where you're going to find a fallen rampart with a ballista on top. You want to clear all of the enemies and then head to the top. Now there is a patrolling mounted soldier. Don't worry about him. You can just wait for him to patrol away and then go up the ladder all the way to the top of the rampart. So you don't actually have to kill him. Now from there, there is a chest. You want to open that chest. And again, it's a teleporter trap. 
this one is going to send you to the royal capital where you're going to find a grace point and a boss just ignore the boss for now run to the right side to loot the chest that has the healing talisman then you can either let the boss kill you or you can run away it's all up to you Okay, so now let's get into some armor that's going to help both casters and melee players. And these are very, very simple to get. The first one I want to talk about is the Sage set. So, like I said, this one is very easy to get. And you don't even have to fight anything. That's the best part. You don't have to fight a single thing. So first, you want to travel to the Lernia Lakeshore side of Grace. And then head north and drop down into this basin full of water and these kind of like rocky spires. Now, from here, you want to head to the southernmost tip of the lake and look for some blue jellyfish because they mark the entrance to the cave. Now, from here, enter the cave and save the side of Grace and then continue along the path. Now, once you enter the first chamber, you want to keep holding right and run along the path kind of along the cave wall. You're going to see an enemy um, down in the middle, like one of those big poison plants. Don't worry about them. Just literally stay along that cliff path. You're going to see this enemy with a staff. You want to run past him and jump the gap. Remember to jump. You don't want to fall, fall down because then I don't know where you're going to end up. So jump over the gap and there's going to be two more enemies with staves that'll most likely cast some poison bolts that are going to chase you. Now, if you hold sprint, which is hold B on the Xbox controller, you can outrun these bolts and you should not get hit. So anyway, continuing to the next chamber, you're going to see quite a few things to loot. Just loot the body in the poison pool for now because that's going to give you your sage set. And the reason being is that three bats will appear and they're kind of tough to fight in these close quarters. So um, I highly recommend grabbing the Sage set and then prioritizing the other two things because to be honest, they're not that important anyway. So you can either fight the bats off, kill them, then loot everything, loot everything, let the bats kill you. It's really up to you. Um, but either way, you have the Sage set now and this is fantastic in terms of magic protection and mobility. It is so it really does make for a great upgrade over the Astrologer's starting gear. Now, our last item that we want to get is the Royal Remains set. This is a super badass looking set. It has some very strong protections and mobility. Plus, like I said, it's very easy to get. There is a kind of difficult boss encounter that you have to overcome, but at the same time, it was one that really it took me a couple tries and that was it. So again, because I'm bad, it shouldn't take you guys that long. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing started. So you want to begin at the Lernia Lake Shore Point and then head north, hugging kind of the rocky wall the entire time. Do this until you reach an area with people that are like hung up on crosses and then keep left and run up a hill until you see a spirit at a well and a grace point in a shack. Make sure to pick this up because you are going to need it. So from that grace point, turn around and keep heading up the hill. So there's going to be an enemy up there called a perfumer. You want to defeat them and you want to watch out because he will heal himself and use magic. So when you get him low and he's not dead, he's going to pop a flask and go all the way back to full. So just be ready for that. Now, once he's dead, continue onward until you see a large pot, hit it, and you'll discover that it's truly not a pot at all. Um, so from here, you're going to get half a medallion. Now this medallion is important in terms of story progression, but it also allows us to unlock the Royal Remains set per se. So from here, open your map and head back to the round table hold. And you're going to notice things look much more grim. There's blood on the floor. It's very dark, dingy, and suddenly you're going to get attacked by Eshna and you need to slay him to continue onward. Now, once he's dead, you're going to be teleported back to the regular hold automatically. You don't have to do anything. And around the corner where Eshna used to stand will be the Royal Remains set for you to use. And that's it, folks. So those are my top eight items. I think every player should get to blast off their Elden Ring character. And honestly, putting this whole thing together was super fun. I know in the past I've talked about how Souls games really aren't my jam. And I typically 
I'm just not great at them. And because of that, I tend to avoid them. But this game really kind of does it in a way that I can still play, have a good time, and don't feel like every single fight is a boss fight. You know, being an astrologer, I know, magic, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, that's really enabled me to actually get into the Souls franchise and play it and really kind of just enjoy it for the first time ever. So anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like action RPGs, consider subscribing. I cover a lot of different games and there's a lot coming out this year in 2022. I plan to have more Elden Ring content as well as Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, Lost Ark. There's tons of stuff out there that I'm gonna be playing. So thank you all so much for the support. Thank you for watching. This has been Vulcan and I'll talk to you next time.